Hello, everyone, and welcome to Learn Xiangqi. Historically, there have been several matches in mind spots between computer software and humans. Examples include the legendary clash between Garry Kasparov and Deep Blue in 1997, and the groundbreaking series between Isidore and AlphaGo in 2016. However, did you know that in 2006, there was a match between the strongest Xiaoxi player at the time and a Xiaoxi supercomputer. Let's dive into it. In 2006, the Chinese IT company Inspur released their latest product, the Inspur TSOT. This supercomputer, specifically designed for playing Xiaoxi, stands 2 meters tall, weighs 300 kilograms, and can calculate up to 4.2 billion moves per second. It was considered the most powerful Xiangqi software in the world at the time. Inspur hosted a Xiangqi competition, inviting five Xiangqi masters and 25 amateurs to compete against the supercomputer, with each player facing the computer twice. Before the match, it was generally believed that the Xiangqi software would defeat amateur players, but not Xiangqi grandmasters due to its slow development. However, the competition results were surprising. Inspur Tissot secured 3 wins, 5 draws, and 2 losses against the professional team. The 25 amateurs split into 5 groups, with each group playing against the computer twice. Against the amateur team, Inspur Tissot achieved 5 wins and 5 draws. The power of the supercomputer appears to surpass that of a human Xiaoxi player. To demonstrate that human Xiaoxi players still outperform Xiaoxi software, Many enthusiasts and professional players suggest that Inspur challenge the leading player of the time, National Xiangqi Grandmaster Xu Yingchuan, to a match against Inspur Tissot. Grandmaster Xu, a six-time National Xiangqi champion, was at his peak in 2006. However, he was initially unavailable due to a scheduling conflict with another competition. After receiving Inspur's invitation, Xu decided to accept the challenge in honor of human Xiangqi players. The game we talk about today is the first match of the two. Xu is playing as Black. Red starts with a central cannon. Black develops the horse. Red develops the horse. Black gets the chariot out. And Red does the same. Black develops another horse. Red decides to push this soldier. Black pushes the other one. The red chariot advances to Black's soldier rank. Black moves the cannon aside to offer a trade. The red chariot moves here to exert pressure on the Black horse. The Black cannon retreats one step, preparing to go to the elbow file to effect the red chariot. This forms a classic central cannon against Green Horse defense opening. At this point, there are a lot of choices for red. For example, Red can choose an aggressive approach by pushing the central soldier, which would lead to an extremely complicated position. Or he could choose a normal variation by developing the horse. In this game, Inspur Tissot chooses to go with a relatively passive variation, which is to move the cannon to the rift file. Red would hope to move the horse up to the river bank later, and the cannon at the back can support the horse. The downside of this variation is that it does not have a clear direction to attack that would normally lead to a calm position later. Black chooses to move the horse back to the centroid, trying to control this spot and trap the chariot with the cannon afterwards. The red chariot captures the soldier, gaining material while escaping from danger. Black moves the elephant up, strengthening the central defense and gaining a tempo. Red moves the chariot to this farm. The black horse has achieved his mission already. So Xu moves the horse out, preparing to attack the chariot by pushing this soldier. Red moves the chariot up one step. The black horse advances to the riverbank, attacking the chariot. Red captures the soldier, acts the black horse. Black uses the cannon to protect it. If we were playing as red, we would probably develop the remaining horse, as it helps to develop a piece, as well as preventing the black horse from going here to attack the chariot. However, Inspetisot decides to push this soldier. This move activates the horse, 
and it is threatening to forcefully push it across the river. Black moves up the advisor. This move secures the central defense and prepares for the development of this chariot. Red pushes the soldier as planned, a very aggressive attacking move as it leaves the left side undeveloped. Black cannot capture the soldier with the elephant as the cannon is using the elephant as a mount to protect the horse. Black moves the horse here to attack the red chariot. Red moves the chariot to attack the cannon, which is the correct move. If Red moves the chariot to the rift file to counter-attack the black horse, Black can offer a trade by moving the chariot here. After the trade, the left side of Red remains undeveloped. Black is obviously having an advantage here. The black cannon retreats to the bottom rack. It could offer a trade with the red cannon in the future. Red developed the horse to offer a trade. Black would not accept the trade, as black has spent three moves already with the black horse. It would be unwise to trade with the red horse that just moves out of its original position. Black advances the horse here, attacking the red soldier and threatening an elbow horse attack. Red chooses to guard against the elbow horse by developing a ranked chariot. This is the correct response. If Red chooses to preserve the soldier, then Black can first give a check and then moves the chariot to Red's bottom rack. In the next move, Black is going to shift the black cannon here to join the attack. The red soldier does not pose any threat to black at all, and the red general is in danger. Therefore, red chooses to give up the red soldier. Black captures the red soldier. Red moves up the horse to the riverbank to control the center. Black moves the cannon here to offer a trade. As mentioned previously, Red does not want to help Black to get the chariot out to a good position. So, instead of accepting the trade, Inspur moves the horse to Black's riverbank, trying to go for the elbow horse with this route in mind. The Black chariot moves up here to prevent the foreseeable danger. It also allows Black to develop his chariot to the rift file. The red chariot shifts to the elbow file. The intention of this move is to forcefully push the soldier across the river and pose a threat to the black horse. Shu responds by moving the chariot to the riverbank. Although the chariot is blocked by its own horse now, later, Black can perform a discovered attack by moving the horse away. Red pushes the soldier. Black moves the horse here and perform a discovered attack. Red does not want to move this horse away as it would give way to the black chariot. Instead, Red chooses to advance the horse to protect each other. Black moves the cannon here to perform a two-fold attack on the horse. Red keeps pushing the soldier. Black captures the horse using the cannon, and Red recaptures with the horse. Black moves the chariot out to force the trade. After the trade, Black recaptures with the horse. This keeps the horse out of the danger for now, and the red horse is still in the mouth of the black chariot. Red shifts the central cannon to this file to protect the horse. Black moves the chariot to the soldier rank to attack red's central soldier. Red cannot protect the soldier with the chariot, as black could then move the chariot to the rift file, threatening a double chariot checkmate. Red would be in some trouble here. So Red just moves his chariot up to support the cannon. Black captures the central soldier with a check. Red moves the advisor up, and then Black captures another soldier. The Red chariot retreats to the riverbank to support his own horse. Black shifts the chariot to the elbow file to attack the elephant. If Red moves up the elephant to the center, then the Black chariot can further attack the Red cannon. And if the red cannon moves away, then the black horse will be free to give a check with the elbow horse. So red moves the elephant to the side instead. 
Black moves his chariot back to the center, preparing to support his central soldier to move across the river. Red moves the other chariot to the elbow file. If Red plays something else, after Black pushes the soldier, when Red tries to offer a trade, Black can perform a fork on the elbow file. Black pushes the soldier, Red offers the trade, and Black accepts it. Now that the black chariot is not doing anything at this position, the so black shifts it to the elbow file, preparing to attack the red cannon. Red seizes the opportunity to attack the black horse. The black horse retreats to the riverbank. Red moves the elephants to the riverbank. This move blocks the path of the chariot and the horse, while also clearing the way for the cannon. Black sees that there are no obvious opportunities to attack. When he pushes the soldier to prevent it from being captured by the red horse. Red attacks the horse with the chariot. The black horse advances to here. Red moves his soldier to the right. Black moves the chariot to the rift file. Red blocks the black horse with the cannon. Then black offers a trade. Red does not accept the trade. This is because black has two soldiers that are guaranteed to be able to cross the river. After the trade of the chariots, it will be much more difficult for Red to defend against the soldiers. Therefore, Red moves the chariot to the soldier rank. Black advances his chariot to aim at Red's edge soldier. Red moves the elephants on the edge back at the bottom to adjust the position. Black pushes the edge soldier. Red moves the chariot here to aim at the edge soldier again. Black moves the horse back to attack the red chariot. After Red captures the soldier, Black moves the horse here to aim at the chariot again. After the Red chariot escapes to the rift file, Black trades the horse with Red's cannon, and both sides agrees to a draw. This marks the result of the first game in the clash between the two. If you find this video helpful, please like this video, comment below, and subscribe to the channel. You could play the game online on Xiangqi.com by clicking the link in the video and screen. If you want to play over the board games, you could click the Amazon link in the description to purchase the Chinese chess set offered by Xiangqi.com. Stay tuned. I will see you soon.